Okay, we've got about four or five more minutes uh, and before we officially get started. Oh, Marina wants everyone to know that we are, she is watching that hashtag closely. So shout out and say hello. Let us know if you've got any questions. And if you didn't get a copy of the interactive tool that we're going to be working with today, uh, that um, is available on hashtag Marketing Solar on Twitter. Um, so you can pick it up there from one of our tweets. Just kind of watching the clock here. A couple of housekeeping notes. We do have a Q&A uh, window. You should be able to log in there and uh, document your questions. We have been answering questions actually from last month's Taking Stock webinar. Uh, we had questions that came in through email and also through the Q&A. We circled back uh, on email and through the webinar itself, the recording of which is available. So you can take a look at all of that, but please don't be shy with your questions and uh, we'll be getting back to you as quickly as we can with answers. All right, just a couple more minutes then before we officially start. Thank you all for your patience with my chatter here. Glenna Wiseman on the sunny west coast, California. And if you're just joining us now, we're uh, going to be launching our webinar here shortly. We're very prompt, this group. So at noon, if you're having your lunch or you're joining us from the East Coast, um, we'll get started here in just a minute. Use the Q&A to get uh, in touch with us or hashtag marketing solar on Twitter. Thank you everyone who's joining us. New people have just come on. We really appreciate that. Hopefully you see a Build It Bright Crafting Your Solar Marketing Program slide. If you don't, somebody shout out and let me know. Okay, thank you for that affirmation that everything is looking good. We appreciate that. <clears throat> just one more time, if you're just joining us, uh, there is a Q&A section um, on your Zoom webinar platform that we're using here today. You can shout out there. <clears throat> Let us know what your questions are. As we move along, we'll answer those at the end of the program. And uh, we're also monitoring the Twitter hashtag um, marketing solar. Okay, <clears throat> I've got 11 a.m. PST, so that means we can get started. All right, welcome to the Build It Bright Crafting Your Solar Marketing Program. I'm Glenna Wiseman, your facilitator today with Identity3, and we are working with Energy Trust of Oregon on this program. Energy Trust of Oregon is an independent nonprofit organization dedicated to helping utility customers benefit from saving energy and generating renewable power. <clears throat> this solar marketing training series for installers is part of the nonprofit's ongoing efforts to reduce solar soft costs and increase solar installations in Oregon and we are very blessed indeed that they are um, opening up this program to installers and not only their contractor allies in Oregon and Washington, but installers across the United States. <clears throat> All right. So we've mentioned uh, hashtag marketing solar. That is your Twitter conversation room today and also throughout the month. Uh, that is manned by Raina Russo of hashtag, hashtag solar chat. Let's see if I can talk. <laughs> and 
Women for Solar out of Florida, and Amy Tuck from Corbet Creative, who has done the graphics for our program. All right, so don't get overwhelmed by this particular slide. Uh, this just gives you an overview of all of the month. We are working through June, and all these recordings and tools and podcasts are all available to you on demand. And so when these slides go out, all of the um, links here will be live for you, and you can access that directly. All right. So today our topic is mapping strategy, engineering your marketing success. And we have just developed a really great tool that we're going to be uh, working with today, and that's available to you. You can uh, download it. Um, there's a link on all of your registration emails and also on Twitter. So today, <clears throat> our objectives are to hear from our special guest, Jenny Hall of Energy Trust of Oregon. She is the originator and the idea person behind this marketing series and our champion to get it all done. So we're really delighted that she's here today uh, to work with us and help us understand the strategy behind the program. And she has a great background in solar, so it's going to be very helpful for everyone. We're going to go through some core areas to get your strategy, um, as daunting as that task may seem, to get it all down on one visual tool. And so we're going to walk through how you get that done, and you'll be able to work with that now and moving forward. All right. So, Jenny, uh, you should be here. Let's see. You should be ready to go. Yep. All right. So let's turn it over uh, to Jenny Hall. Thank you, Glenna. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Energy Trust of Oregon is really happy to be working with Glenna Wiseman to create this training series as part of our larger solar cost reduction initiative. The goal of the initiative here is to identify and reduce the non-hardware soft costs of a solar installation and to make solar simpler and more affordable affordable to install for contractors and customers alike. We did a survey in 2014 um, and we surveyed Oregon solar installers and found that soft costs accounted for more than 50% of the total cost of the average system here in Oregon and that customer marketing and outreach made up a significant portion of that cost for contractors. Energy Trust relies on a strong network of trade ally contractors here in the state to reach our customers and assist them in meeting their energy goals. The Energy Trust trade ally network is overwhelmingly built of small and mid-sized local businesses and cultivating this network we feel creates jobs and builds local capability at a community level throughout the state, which is really important to the solar industry here. We believe that reducing the cost of reaching new solar customers ultimately leads to savings, both for the customer, uh, it leads to more solar installations, uh, which in turn creates thriving solar businesses that contribute back to our local economy and ultimately generate more renewable energy in Oregon. Before accepting my position here at Energy Trust, um, as Glenna mentioned, I was a co-owner and an operations manager for a local solar installation company based here in Portland. And it was my responsibility to handle advertising and marketing decisions for the business. As a small business owner, or even as a small business employee, you end up wearing many different hats, and it is impossible to be an expert at all things. I wish then I would have had access to a resource like Lena Wiseman and to a structured process for creating a marketing plan like she's created here for you. If you have any questions for me, I'm going to be here all day, all morning. You can ent enter them into the chat window, um, or you can con contact me directly through my email there on the slide. I'm also going to be uh, taking part in the Marketing Solar conversation on Twitter today. So use hashtag Marketing Solar, um, and you can get, get in touch with me that way. Thank you, Glenna. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, thank you, Jenny, and please take advantage of this opportunity to reach out to her. Uh, she is really a great resource uh, for information, and um, we really appreciate all that she's done here. And we're going to put her on mute just real quick, but she is going to be around, and if we can cover any questions at the end of the program, 
Uh, we'll get as many of those um, answered as we can, and otherwise we'll uh, circle back to everybody through email or Twitter. All right, so uh, the first thing that we're gonna do, and this looks like a maze of icons, but it isn't. What it is, is it's references back to the Taking Stock webinar that we did um, last month. And so what you're gonna see is, um, as we work with our interactive tool, which should pop up now, there we go. <clears throat> this is our great, um, this is a way for you to take all the work that you did in terms of fine tuning um, your priorities. And you see here that we've got all the branding, the graphics, collateral, website, social media, public relations, client related, lead tracking, and then a space to write in others if we miss some that are important to you this year. Um, this is a place to transcribe the work that you did through the process last month into this overview that the tool, the mapping tool represents for this month. So that you can, and if you haven't gone through that process, the webinar and the tool are both available online, and you can go through the process of putting this into um, an overview. And the, 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 the um, opportunity here with our Mapping Your Solar Marketing Strategy uh, PDF is for the, you to be able to really get everything down on one sheet. And you can print it, you can put it large on your wall, you can give it to other people that you have on your team. Um, it's um, a really great resource to be able to do that. So what we're gonna do today is um, go through the prep work. And you see here um, in our first session that we're gonna talk about sharpening your positioning, is that we have um, some check boxes with your prep work that you can do. And you know, this is a lot of work. We're not saying that it isn't a lot of work. We're just giving you a tool and a way to do it that allows you to move through it in a very systematic way. So we're gonna work first on prep, this section here in the middle, um, sharpen positioning. And I'm gonna go back and forth. I hope I don't make anybody dizzy, uh, but we're gonna go back and forth in terms of giving you some tools, some ways and walking you through that prep work. Um, and then it's up to you to work with the uh, process to get it all documented. All right, so positioning is our first part. And you see we have our little positioning icon here in the upper, uh, what is my right, um, so that you can see which section we're working on and you can tie that to the tool. So we're working on a competitive landscape review. So this first part of the prep work is based on looking at your competitors with the, um, the goal of helping you to see what your customers see. So you're looking through the lens or the eyes of your customers now, and you're working to get to your top three competitive strengths. So it's a very systematic process. I, I, I do this a lot with the customers that I work with. So you wanna find and identify the five to six competitors that you actually meet in the field. Who are the people that you encounter when you're um, either winning or losing bids? The people that your, your sales folks will know exactly who these people are. Um, and don't worry if, you know, if they're not the big guys or, you know, just go with the people that you are constantly up against in the market. The easiest way to do this is to create a spreadsheet. And normally I've got about 30 data points that I'm looking for, but there are some key areas. You want to look at their marketing what kinds of website work that they're doing. What is the structure of their website? What kind of SEO? How are they, you know, what is the social media stuff? What is a tagline? How are they positioning themselves in terms of uh, their marketing message on their website? The second major area you want to look at is customer messaging. These are also called value propositions. What is the value that you are bringing to your customers? So you want to look at are your competitors um, clearly communicating the brand benefit, the value benefit that they give to the customers. And I just did a marketing, um, a competitive an landscape analysis uh, for a uh, firm, and we discovered that nothing above the fold on the website of their major competitors really clearly spoke customer value. So that's an opportunity that we now have with this client. So that's very exciting. Um, you also want to look at sectors. Um, what kinds of services do they offer that uh, compare with yours? So again, the goal is you want to see 
what your customers see in a very systematic approach so that you can understand how you compare and you can start to filter to your three competitive strengths. That's our end game here. All right, more prep work in positioning. This time, we're going to look at internal or company voices and perspectives on your brand. This process is meant to gather the points of view that the company people have, your team has, um, so that you can understand how others within your own organization see the company. What are its core strengths? Why was the firm created? Um, what is the joy or the passion that the company lives to accomplish? And why do you think customers work with you? Now you can record these talks and then transcribe them. You can have a, a system. I would recommend that you have a standard set of questions that you, are, you know, that you ask everyone so that you have a consistent base of input that you're working from. But again, the goal is to uh, take all of these points of view and filter them down to your uh, three competitive strengths. Now finally, our prep work here on positioning has to do with customer voices. We looked at how do customers see your competitors? How does your team look at what you're doing and understand who you are in terms of a company? Now you want to understand your customer voices. And this process is um, really valuable. Really, I mean, I cannot underscore how valuable this process is. And I'm talking about going beyond surveys, even though we're going to send you one at the end of this webinar. Um, I'm talking about really coming up with a set of questions that you then do phone interviews. And again, I would recommend that you use something like the Zoom platform that we're using here or something to record and that you have um, a, a set of questions that you're working with that helps you to discover your customer's point of view of why they are working with your firm. Digging deep into what are their perceptions? What are the insights that they have around you as a unique company in the market? Why did they choose you over other competitors? And really valuable if you can get a hold of some folks that went with another firm, why did they go with that other firm? It is rarely just over price. So you want to get at the core of why you are competitive or why you are not. And I would also suggest here that um, as you're talking to customers, that you have a really distinct opportunity to gather testimonials. And I know a lot of you already have testimonials, including video, which is awesome, um, of your customers. But a lot of times someone will say something in their own words that you can then um, record and you can say back to them, obviously when it's a positive interaction, you can say back to them, you know, can I, can I take your words and use it as a testimonial? And you can send it back to them and um, say, please approve this. And now all of a sudden you have even more testimonials to have on your website, just as a sort of side benefit of this positioning prep work. All right. So when you've gone through all of these pieces, your competitor review and your team interviews and your client interviews, I guarantee you that by the time you get through all of this, you will see patterns. You will start to understand the strengths that are really unique to your firm. And these top three competitive strengths, when you really identify them, you can translate them into everything across all of your marketing. You can turn them into value propositions that you're then showing the customer the value that you're presenting to them. So this is, if I, I really can't stress this enough, how exciting uh, the results of this work can be. All right, so we've covered positioning prep work. And yes, I very much realize that this is skimming through a whole lot of work the goal is to give you a structure for that uh, so that you understand how to go through it. You can dig deeper. You can let us know if you've got questions um, in order to get through this, being able to synthesize it down to our company's top three competitive strengths are boom, boom, boom. To get to that point, to clearly articulate that takes a lot of work, but you will be much more powerful in the marketplace and everything that you do from a marketing and sales point of view 
will be more effective, more on target, and reap better returns because you did this foundational strategy work. Okay, I should stop preaching. All right, so uh, next we're going to this next section called understand your most important customers. And of course we have a little eyeball there because we're looking at our customers. <clears throat> our prep work here relates to our data. We're looking at the customer interviews from a little bit different point of view and team interviews with sales people and consumer data. And so then what we are looking to do here is um, create three customer types or personas uh, that we want to use in all of our marketing communications. So let's go back to our slides and look at the prep work related to data. Now, if you have um, a CRM or you have some level of uh, gathering data, you're ahead of the game here. And this is another plug for those, and I know lots of you work with and or are con contemplating a customer relationship management tool. There's many of them out there, Salesforce, Sugar, there's all kinds of them out there. Um, <clears throat> this is one um, aspect of that is if you document the kinds of customer types, the demographic data points around those customers. And this is a great simplification of this, but the point is to start. It's not to get it completely, you know, the most all encompassing data generating machine that you can possibly come across. You just need to start. And if you've already started, then you need to, under, then you want to look at what are your customer types. This year is going to be very busy for everyone. And you want to be focused. You want to have priorities. That's the idea here in terms of mapping strategy, is to get your priorities down. And the idea here is to strategically focus on the customer groups that are the most important for you, the ones that convert the easiest, the ones that you get the best profit margins out of, the ones that are the best referral um, machines. So you want to look at um, the different customer types Who's the most important to your business? Go through your data. Understand who you're, you know, you're getting the most types of business from. What are their age group? Who's initiating the research? Our research says that the women mostly, most of the time, when it's a couple, do the advanced legwork. Is that true? And if so, how old are these women? And what do they work? Do they have children? What's the deal? Who, who's then making the decision? And are we looking at residential sale or PPA? And what geos are we looking at? So again, we want to get go through the data so we can pinpoint the top three to five customer types that we want to focus on. Okay. And I fully admit these slides have a lot of text. The idea here is for you to use them as a reference. Um, so next we want to do customer interviews. So we talked about customer interviews a few minutes ago. So when you have got your base, the three or four types of customers that are most important to your business and you select five to 10 within each group to talk to, if you're going to do this process and the one that we just mentioned before, then I would say couple it together and do it at one time um, or talk to different customer types. Then you're going to personally interview them again, like you did before. You want to find out what were their key buying questions that they used at each stage? What were their concerns at each stage? Where did they find the information? Why did they end up coming to you? So you want to get a clear picture of the process th those customers used to get to you to make their solar decision and where they found information and what kinds of information did they, um, what kinds of inf information sources worked best for them and what kinds of questions. If you can pinpoint the questions that they had in each stage of their buying journey, then you have a really great set or, or um, outline for content development, just to keep in mind. Okay, so let's just stop here and see. Okay, Lucille says, how can I access the PDF? Sorry, we're gonna do a pop-up question here. Uh, it is on identity3.com under marketing solar. It will be up on the Energy Trust 
um, site soon, but you can access it there. Okay. Now, here's another point of view. You want to get the point of view from the customers themselves, but you also want to talk to your sales team. The salespeople have stuff up in their heads they don't even know that they have. Um, they have, what are their key customer types? If it's a couple, who do they talk to at each stage of the buying journey? Who's present in that kitchen table, and se kitchen table selling environment? And what are their concerns and questions? Concerns and questions are so key because they give you the ammunition to respond to those concerns and questions via your website, via your content, because that's the advanced place all of these prospects go first or in concert to their research before they even reach out to you in most cases. In a commercial sale process, what are the roles of the company that you're talking to? Do they talk to the CFO? Do they talk to the owner of the property? What, what are the roles and what do those roles in the company, what are the questions that they ask? Okay, finally, in this process where we're identifying our customer types and we're putting together all this data to create our profiles. You want to match uh, your internally gathered information to consumer data. So for example, um, if you've targeted that an eco-aware mom is your primary target, she's just, she loves you, she buys from you all the time, you answer all of her questions, you you leave the install site beautifully clean. She refers you to all of her friends. Okay, you've got some information about her, but you want to go online and find out more information about her so that you fully understand her the best possible. <coughs> Excuse me. And next month, we're going to have a consumer uh, profile, a persona tool for you. So if you get all this information together, next month we're going to help you do these personas which are really, really critical uh, in terms of doing your campaign because then you know who you're talking to. If you're talking to eco-aware mom Jane, and that's the name of your persona, that's your key customer type, then if you have this persona built out for her, then you're going to know who you're talking to when you're sending your social media and your emails and your content development. You're going to understand that. The other goal here is um, the Faraday. I have a tip here for you. The Faraday platform, which is available for Energy Trust of Oregon Business Development Funds, and you can find out more about that on the energytrust.org slash business development page and from Ms. Jenny. Um, it is, um, helps you. You can go on the Faraday platform and you can use the customer type information that you have. That's the prep work you've got to do in order to take advantage of the Faraday platform to target more households uh, that fit the demographic group that you've discovered is your best customer. All right, <clears throat> so next month we'll go through um, more in depth how to create these personas, but for right now, if you do all this work by next month and use that as your deadline, you will be way ahead of the game in terms of your strategy map for this year. All right, so let's do, we've answered that one, okay. Now, next we're going to go to market sectors. Uh, this is um, also a whole lot of work, <laughs> but you'll be head of the game. Uh, so we've kind of zoomed down to the bottom um, section, midsection here of our mapping strategy tool. And you see the little bullseye there. This is our place where um, we can identify those market sectors within the industry that we're going after that are our highest priority and, and or that we're going to target for startup for this year. Again, you can, you can see all this information in one pass if you do the prep work to get it done. So let's go back over to our prep work related to market sectors. <clears throat> So here again, data is our friend. This time the data comes from the sales and operations side of your business. Um, Jenny's got a program working with some really talented gals that are working on helping the, uh, the contractor allies identify these kinds of uh, data points. Um, but basically you want to um, look at who's got your, you know, what kinds of business creates your best margins. 
after installation and after all the uh, ops part of it is uh, secure, what types, size, and geolocations do your top margin business fit uh, so that you can replicate? Again, we want to we want to get a view of that sweet spot of that, you know, that type of business that is the most profitable for you. What is the cost of acquisition for each type of business? That's from a marketing point of view. Try to get some ideas of what it costs you to, to get a piece of residential business versus a, a piece of commercial business, for example. And then take into consideration the sales commission and the and commission staff. So we're looking at prior sales in order to help us understand with real data what um, are our most profitable market sectors to uh, amplify in 2016. And then we're focusing on them. Uh, once you've got these, you, you've got your uh, priorities for the year in terms of what you want to focus on. You want to focus on the stuff that's going to generate the most, the best margins for you. And then new markets. Um, a lot of you, when we were doing our advanced work here, and the industry in general, is really focused on the CNI market right now. So, if you are working in terms of commercial and you want to have more commercial business, if you have a, if you have a project, one project, two projects in this market, those are your foot in the door. Those are your baseline projects. You can use them to look at how, was it successful, how did it perform in terms of margin. How did the install go? What did we do to get it marketed? How did we get it sold? What can we do to replicate that? Um, you've got a little jewel there because then you can rep, you know, use that as your base to replicate that. Or you can say, wait a minute, that didn't work. We don't want to go into that market at all. So you may not have um, new market sectors that you're pursuing this year, but you at least want to ask the question and make sure that you understand clearly that maybe new markets are a, 20, a 2017 endeavor. All right, now we have in the tool over here on the side, map quarterly marketing goals and budget. The idea here is that you can review your priorities, you can go through the process of sharpening your positioning and identifying your most important customers and you can your most important sectors. And then you can go through and map quarterly goals and budgets. So let's talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> why that's important. And we're going to go back over here. Hopefully none of you are getting dizzy with this. Okay. <clears throat> the thing that I would suggest here is look at your set of priorities and what you want to accomplish and figure out what are the fundamental building blocks that will affect everything else. For example, a style guide. And many, many of you listen to um, Amy's podcast on, on graphics. Uh, it was a very successful podcast that's still available for you to look at, to listen to, to download and listen to. And style guide was one of the key things that she focused on there. And a style guide, if you do it early in the year or refresh it, revisit it, make sure that um, you understand how your logo is being used, make sure that it's um, responsive, all of these different things, fine tune that one piece and all of the pieces that relate to it. And that will fundamentally make your life simpler the rest of the year. Because whether you go to an outside firm or you stay internal in all of your work, if everything ascribes and is guided by that style guide through the rest of the year, then you will save all kinds of time and money. You won't be running around trying to figure out how this thing should look. Here's the style guide, make it look like that. The same thing with your brand development, everything related to what we've just talked about are really fundamental building blocks that if you get done early in the year, they will guide everything else. So that would be my speech on that. <laughs> Next, you want to look at budgets. Um, I know that budgets can, uh, if you're working from a zero-based budgeting, budgeting can be kind of a tough thing. But if you research, if you have your deliverables that you want to get done on a quarterly basis, then you can research what those things should cost. You can get three bids like 
they do every time you go out and walk into a home, right? They do three bids at least on every solar install usually. And then you can use an average. So you're not trying to come up with a budget out of thin air. You actually have a plan and you have a scope of work that you're um, working hard to deliver on. And that then you can ascribe estimated budgets against that scope of work. And of course, they're going to change. And of course, in some places, you're going to get uh, a better deal than you thought. In other places, you're going to have overages. But at least you've got a, a roadmap that you can work from. OK, resources. This is our final area here in terms of pri prioritizing resources. Uh, it's kind of in the middle there um, because I really think that unless you know what you want to get accomplished, how much you have to spend, who you're talking to, and what kinds of business you want to generate, you don't know what kind of resources uh, that you need. So um, several of you spoke of your um, feeling like resources. Um, when you went outside to outside resources, you didn't understand you, know, you didn't get what you were expecting. So this is the prep work um, related to helping you get what you really want and making sure it's successful. And I would also uh, recommend that you listen to the Kent Lewis podcast that we just uh, published last week on uh, social media. Um, in his um, podcast, we asked him about um, resources and hiring resources and the metrics involved in measuring uh, whether the resource was a success. And he has some very practical advice for you there that really relates to um, how much money would it cost you to do this work? How much is it the lost opportunity of you being not in the field or not working on your core level of business? How much work would you have to get? from that investment in order to make it work worthwhile. You can really put some metrics behind this. So I would encourage you to listen to his podcast for some help there. All right, so let's go back to our um, PowerPoint and work on our prep work. So types. Um, again, I would go back to those fundamental pieces. And oh, see, look at that. I've got a link for you for the social media podcast with Ken. Look at that. That's awesome, isn't it? So <laughs> at least making myself laugh here. Um, the types of resources, focus on the ones that are related to your highest priority. Focus on the ones that are going to get you a view on your business that you might not be able to come up with otherwise. If you go through all of these steps, now you can hire somebody to do all of these steps that I just outlined. That is definitely an option. And you can be very specific about what you want and what kind of time frame it should take to get that done. Um, you can also prep that and then take that information to a resource that will help you articulate it to maybe a new logo, a new brand, look and feel. Um, but you want to start with the things that are the most important for you and the things that you feel like are going to be the most difficult for you to get done yourself. And then figure out whether you're hiring a person internally that's going to handle this and other things, or you're going to go outside. And then again, the metrics involved uh, in the link to Ken's podcast. All right. So I just want to go back over here to the tool. Real quick. Outline the expectations and ben benchmarks for successful resource work. Um, I would say be very specific about what you're looking for, what you want to accomplish. If you want a new website, understand that a new website is not just the graphics. And as a matter of fact, the graphics should not even start. I want to talk about websites for a minute because we've had so many questions about websites. There are many different ways to approach websites, but you first have to have your strategy down. If you want a website that's going to clearly articulate who you are in the market and speak in customer value propositions to your most important customers, you still need to do this legwork. You either need to do this legwork or you need to have someone do it for you 
and know that you're going to ascribe a certain amount of budget and a certain amount of time on your side to get this done. So do that level of this level of legwork, and then if you're tackling a website redesign this year, you are armed with a very clear vision of who your company is in the market, where you're going, what kinds of business you want to focus on, and what appeals to which kind of customers. So these are really important points. Then set, then do some research. Meet with different firms. Talk about how they handle the strategy development. Talk about how do they just hand it over to an IT person or do they generate a level of graphics development so that you can approve. And then take into consideration what kinds of work it's going to take you to manage that. You want a website that you don't have to depend on some IT person, and they're all awesome. I'm not saying they're not, but you want to be empowered. You want to make sure that you can um, get up that new content marketing piece or capitalize on a new testimonial or get a new video up quickly. Uh, you want to be empowered with the ability to change your website. If something happens that is, um, you win an award, you win a new piece of business that's huge and you want to communicate that right away. You want to get a press release up. So make sure that that um, content management system, CMS, different than CRM, CMS, is um, that your team understands how to use it and somebody is really versed in doing that. Even the simple thing as WordPress, has its ins and outs. And so you want to make sure that you are that you accept how the, that this is going to work. And I kind of dovetailed a little bit over to website, but it's because we've gotten a lot of questions around websites. So I want to make sure everybody's got a chance to really dive into that. Okay. All right. So um, I don't, you know, if you have any questions on how to go through this process, please let us know. We're here to help. All right, so let's go over to what's next. So these webinars, the live webinar is the fourth Thursday of the month through June at 11 a.m. PST. Next month, we're going to have, um, we're going to tackle presenting your best. So we're going to take, we've done our inventory. Now we're working on strategy. And next, we're going to work on campaign development and creative content. So this is, gets into the more fun stuff, although I love all of this analysis work too. <laughs> and we're going to focus on a tool that will help you to build these personas and then map that, uh, what you come up with. So please work on your customer types. Please make sure that you're, that you're ready to go with that next level of it. Um, the podcast, every month we have a podcast that we're doing with uh, to capture voices, marketing voices that, that you can get help from that is directly related to solar marketing. This isn't some general approach here. It's all about solar marketing. And then you can get the recording um, of, from the Taking Stock webinar from last month. Where is the program online? It is at energytrust.org slash business development. Energy Trust also has an insider blog, a calendar listing. Um, on our Identity3 website, we have a hashtag marketing solar page and a blog um, that has all of these materials there as well. And then you can contact me in these various ways. Uh, and we're going to get a survey out here in just a few minutes after the webinar is over. So please give us your feedback. Um, let's see if we have any questions. What questions that we have? Uh, yes, we have a question for Jenny. So I'm going to go over and unmute Jenny. Jenny, are you there? Hi, Glenn. I'm here. Hi, awesome. Well, we have a few more minutes. I get all excited and I run through this really fast. <laughs> so hopefully everybody got all that. Um, this question is, um, what, what happened exactly that really pointed you in the direction that a training series around marketing would be valuable for your contractor allies? That's a great question. Um, it was really the uh, contractors asking for um, a variety of these materials. 
um, and asking for them in a lot of different ways. So uh, we thought it would be a great opportunity to bring in um, subject matter experts on uh, operations, on marketing, and um, on financial management to provide those resources for contractors here in Oregon. I, I mentioned the financial. Can you just give us a little bit of a, a more perspective on what that part of it is about? Uh, sure. So uh, there, we we're working with uh, Leslie Shiner with the Shiner Group, um, and she is uh, well known in in the construction industry, and she's a pretty experienced presenter. Um, to to work with uh, Oregon solar contractors um, to help them understand some of the best practices in the industry and uh, just kind of work with them to fix fix up their books and make sure that there's not any profit hiding somewhere that they're not accounting for appropriately. As you've mentioned in your presentation uh, this time and last time, if you if you aren't measuring it, then uh, you know, you can't grow it. And so, really, helping contractors to to bring that into their businesses. Now the, the the Energy Trust won an award at SPI last year, right? Tell us, it was related to soft cost reduction. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, we uh, we won an award through the internet. Um, through IREC, uh, the uh, 3I award, and I'm not necessarily sure I'm going to remember the, all of the acronyms, but it was uh, for our work on soft cost reduction. Um, it was uh, an award that was voted on by all of the um, by all of the respondents to the survey. So it was really great and to be recognized in that way. We we're very proud of it. So this this whole area of soft cost reduction. Um, and that, if I remember correctly, related to the actual end user's um, ability to use one form, right? And it was reducing the number of forms they had to fill out or that the installers had to fill out. That was one part of it? Correct. The one, uh, some of the work that we're doing um, is, is internal um, and is within the agencies here in Oregon. So in addition to uh, working with um, solar contractors um, who are inside of our network um, and working with them on business practices and marketing. We're also streamlining um, efforts. <laughs> We're under, underway on a, several different efforts internally to streamline the process of applying for um, solar incentives. Um, and we're working with the state utilities, um, the State Department of Energy to um, make the process much more seamless for contractors uh, to apply for um, interconnection, to apply for state tax credits. Um, it's been very successful so far and we're about to um, roll out uh, some additional changes um, allowing e-signature for our incentive applications and we expect that to save contractors um, another uh, one to two hours on um, the average residential install just in tracking down customer signatures and filling out paperwork. We're really proud of the work we're doing. I, I think it's, it's awesome. And you have, um, I, I mentioned uh, the business development fund. So from my perspective, I think it would be great if you could just mention a little bit. I, I mentioned Faraday, but uh, we talk also, we also talked to Kent Lewis uh, with uh, Anvil Media about his measurement tool. Uh, that uh, a company can use to really get a hard hard numbers around their presence online. Both of those um, are available for business development funds for Oregon uh, Energy Trust contractor allies. Is that correct? That is correct. So the business development fund is um, something that we provide trade ally contractors across all of the programs that Energy Trust administers, in addition to solar, we work on a variety of energy efficiency programs throughout the state. Um, and uh, business development 
fund operates similarly to cooperative marketing uh, that you might find with many different manufacturers. Uh, and it's a, a cost match. So um, there are certain categories of, of kind of pre-approved expenses as far as marketing your business or um, developing uh, technical skills or developing um, business, financial, operational, or marketing expertise. There's trainings that you can sign up for, and Energy Trust will match that um, contractor expense uh, up to 30%, and there's a, also a, a quarterly cap available to each contractor. Right. You can find more information on that at uh, energytrust.org slash uh, business development for local contractors here in Oregon. And for all contractors, you know, most um, manufacturers, uh, when I was at uh, the leading the marketing for a California-based uh, solar installer called Helio Power, um, we depended a lot on co-op funds. So one of the ways that folks can um, offset that marketing budget cost is to make sure that they have fully investigated all of their co-op funds, that they know what the process is and get it down to, you know, as clean and uh, frictionless uh, a process as possible to apply for the funds because you certainly can empower lots of things like ribbon cuttings and email and advertising and landing pages and all kinds of things uh, with co-op funds. So um, I know that Solar World there in Oregon has um, a co-op uh, program and so I think that folks uh, certainly across the country want to be sure that they are finding money and you spoke about finding money in the jobs and reducing the amount of time it takes to get signatures. This is what's happening in the industry. So I think everybody can be um, really put that on your radar in terms of working on it. One, one final question, Jenny, or opportunity to talk about the May event in the, in the state. Uh, maybe since we've got you, could you give us just a little bit of a heads up on this May event? Certainly. Uh, so here in Oregon, uh, we have a a regional conference that takes place in Portland uh, around May each year. And this year it's going to be uh, May 4th and 5th. And it's, you can find out more information on that uh, at OregonSolarEnergyConference.com. We're going to be working with our Oregon Trade Allies more in depth um, at a contractor summit uh, the day before that conference. So. Um, that's an opportunity that's available to Oregon contractors, especially trade ally contractors. Um, and for everybody else who might be listening, we we hope that you can uh, join us at the conference. It's going to be a great one. We expect uh, that Roan Rush is going to be presenting the, at the beginning of the conference and providing a keynote. Um, so that's really exciting for us this year. Again, that's OregonSolarEnergyConference.com. That's the best way to get the most information. Thanks for letting us plug it, Glenna. Oh, all right. Okay, so um, I just really want to thank everyone uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Raina and Amy, for your support out there in the Twitter sphere. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for showing up and answering all of our questions today. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback related to the topic or the tool. And also, if you've got any things particularly related to creative content and campaign development uh, so that we can really get a heads up on answering your questions and giving you really valuable feedback for next month, we would really appreciate that. All right. Have a sunny day, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We're going to sign off now. <laughs>